What comes to your mind when I say the word Hampi? Most of you will tell ruins of the Vijayanagara Empire, the famous stone chariot on your 50 rupee note, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and so on. But Hampi is also known for its rich biodiversity. Apart from housing the Indian sloth bear in the famous Daroji sloth bear sanctuary which you guys saw in my earlier video, there are 70 different type of birds found in Hampi. Today in this video, I will show you guys the different type of birds which I saw in Hampi. So without any further ado, let's get started with the video. Hampi is located approximately 340 kilometers away from Bangalore in the northeastern part of Karnataka. Traveling from Bangalore to Hampi can be done by various modes of transportation, by roads, through buses and cabs, by train and by air as well. Jindal Vijayanagara Airport is the nearest airport to Hampi at a 74 kilometers distance. We decided to take the cab route which covers the distance in approximately 7 hours. The journey to Hampi was very scenic with a rocky and a mountainous backdrop. Our destination was the famous Hampi Heritage and Wilderness Resort operated by the Jungle Lodges and Resorts also known as JLR. The Hampi Heritage and Wilderness Resort is a popular JLR property located at the edge of the Daruji Sloth Bear Sanctuary. Spread around 32 acres of scrubland, the resort is an ideal gateway to go away from the hustle and bustle of daily life and get closer to nature. There are a total of 19 cottages inside the property against the beautiful boulder backdrop. The cottages are built in a bungalow style architecture with nice spacious rooms, clean bathrooms. The rooms were also air conditioned to give you relief from the heat. lunch, we took the afternoon safari inside the Daroji Sloth Bear Sanctuary. Hampi is famous for four important species of birds, or the big four I would like to call them. They are the yellow-throated bulbul, the painted sand grouse, the Indian eagle owl and the painted sparfowl. In this trip, we were able to see three of these four elusive species. Inside the sanctuary along the banks of one of the Tungabhadra canals, our driver spotted something on the edge of the canyon. There it was, the first of the big four species, the Indian eagle owl. The Indian eagle owl is the largest owl species found in India. This powerful owl species is native to the Indian subcontinent and surrounding regions. They typically have a mottled appearance with brownish grey plumage streaked with darker markings. They are adaptable to a variety of habitats including wooden areas, open forests, scrublands and rocky terrain. Like many owl species, the Indian eagle owl are primarily nocturnal hunters. They are well adapted to low light conditions and have excellent night vision. This owl was peacefully resting on the edge of the rock. As we went deeper into the forest, we also saw a woolly neck stalk. Here is a picture guys. And a Eurasian hoopo as well. While we were returning after watching the sloth bears from the watchtower, we saw a peahen on the other side of the canal going back to its den at the end of the day. After returning from the safari, I decided to explore this vast jailer property. Hey look, 
they have a bird bath right inside the property itself. There is a small hide as well, about 15 feet away from the bath. This is for the photographers to capture and shoot different birds. After inquiring from the staff, I came to know that activity mostly happens early morning and late evening. So I plan to return to the hide early next morning to film them. It's day 2 on a cold winter morning. I came to the hide and patiently waited for the birds to come. The first to arrive in the bath was a beautiful laughing dove. They are named so because of their soft rhythmic cooling sounds which are sometimes described as a soft chuckling or a laughing noise. They have red and pink feet and their eyes are surrounded by a bare patch of skin that varies in color from blue to white. Laughing doves are highly adaptable and can be found in variety of environments including open woodlands, scrublands, urban areas and agricultural landscapes as well. Behind the laughing dove, we could see the grey francolin picking in. They are these adaptable birds that inhabit a variety of environments including grasslands, agricultural fields, scrublands and open woodlands. They are often found in areas with dense vegetation. These birds are known for their ground dwelling behavior. They are often seen running through the undergrowth or taking short flights when disturbed. A flock of Indian silver bills also arrived. Also known as the white throated munia, these are small birds commonly found in open grasslands, scrublands, and agricultural areas. As I was filming the silver bills, suddenly something moved inside the bushes. It was a jungle bush quail, a very secretive bird which often stays hidden inside dense vegetation. These are small sized birds. The plumage of both the males and females are cryptic in nature. This provides good camouflage in their natural habitat. They inhabit areas with dense undergrowth including grasslands, scrublands and areas with thick vegetation. I got some beautiful shot of this bird as well. That's all we could find in the bird bath. Post lunch, we decided to go to the hide inside the Daroji Sloth Bear Sanctuary to shoot and film the bears. I have already made a dedicated video on the sloth bears of Daroji. Do check that video as well, I will add a link to that video. While going to the location, we saw a second of the big four species, the painted sand grouse. I couldn't film them as it flew away very quickly, but here's a snap which I managed to capture. Inside the hide, apart from the sloth bear, we saw a third of the big four species, the painted spurfowl. It is a species of bird of the pheasant family native to the parts of India, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh. Though this is found in many places, Hampi, according to me, is the best place to film and shoot this beautiful species. The painted spurfowl male and female look quite different to each other. The male is characterized by his striking and colorful appearance with a combination of black and white and orange markings. Females on the other hand have a more cryptic brown and buff coloration to provide better camouflage. These birds are also ground dwelling in nature and spend much of their time foraging on the forest floor for seeds, insects and small invertebrates. Painted spurfowls are known for their shy and elusive behavior. They often use the dense vegetation for their cover and can be challenging to spot. The Indian peacock, also known as the Indian peafowl, arrived for lunch. The national bird of India, known for its vibrant plumage and impressive courtship displays, are found all over the country in variety of environments including grasslands, open forests and cultivated areas.
they are ground dwelling in nature and spend most of their time foraging on the ground for seeds insects small invertebrates and plants as well the females are known as peahen they are generally less striking in appearance with a mottled brown coloration peahens lack the elaborate and colorful tail feathers as seen in males that was all the birds we saw in the hide while we were returning a small bird on the side of the road caught our attention it was the ashy crown sparrow lark this is a small bird often found in arid and semi arid regions including deserts scrublands and open grasslands the adult male has a distinctive appearance with a grayish brown crown giving it the ashy crown name the female is generally more subdued in color with a strict appearance on the breast they are known for their ground dwelling behavior they forage on the ground for seeds insects and small invertebrates their cryptic plumage helps them to blend into the arid surroundings a few minutes later we saw another lark this time it was a rufous tail lark they are named so because of the rufous or chestnut colored tail which stands out against the overall plumage like the ashy crown sparrow lark they are also ground dwelling birds found in arid and semi arid regions with this our birding trip in hampi ended unfortunately we couldn't see the last of the big four species the yellow throated bulbul but i guess that is for another day if you guys like this video please click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to my channel if you haven't had hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any future videos from wildlife captured goodbye for now and see you in my next adventure